So OpenSUSE Leap 42.2 is going to be coming out in a couple weeks, and I feel like now is prime time to do a preview video on it. So if you've followed my channel since the beginning, or if you look at my videos, my very first video was of OpenSUSE, and it was OpenSUSE Factory, I think. It was a long time ago, uh, two years ago, so I guess maybe it wasn't that long ago. But we're going to go ahead and install this. This is RC2. The release date is, I think, the 16th of November, so it's pretty much the final release candidate. They'll probably fix a couple bugs. We're going to be installing this on actual hardware. This is not a VM, so it's probably going to be maybe a little bit slower. I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's not an SSD. It is a, like, really slow hard drive. It's just some spare hardware I have. But the processor is an AMD A6 6800, I think. So it's got integrated Radeon graphics, so we'll be using, I think we'll be using Radeon SI. Uh, I don't know if OpenSUSE Leap uses the AMD GPU yet, uh, so that'll be interesting. So if you don't know anything about OpenSUSE Leap, it is really the unsung hero when it comes to Linux distributions. Not many people run it, but it seems like everybody has good things to say about it. It's a really great distribution. I used it for a long time, uh, but I have nothing but good things to say about OpenSUSE. It's a, it's a great distribution. I believe that the core of it is largely based on uh, SUSE or SLEE Enterprise Linux, I think. Uh, I'm sure that somebody in the comments will correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that the, maybe the kernel is based on uh, Enterprise. At any rate, it's super, super stable. And OpenSUSE Leap has a really, really long release cycle. It's not like Ubuntu, which has, you know, releases every six or nine months or whatever the hell their release cadence is. OpenSUSE Leap is, the release cycle is like two years or, or something. I might even be longer. So you'll see a license agreement. Uh, I think that it's pretty standard. Honestly, I've never actually read through it, but I assume that it's pretty standard. So we'll go ahead and pass this. And it's gonna probe my system. My system is quite unremarkable, honestly. Not really much going on. So a cool thing about the OpenSUSE installer is that you can add online repositories. It says before the installation, but the, the, the concept is that you add your repositories during the installation so that you don't you don't have to like install the operating system and then load in and then load a bunch of repositories and then do like a big update. You can do that all during the install. So that's actually pretty slick. We're not going to do that though. So the partitioning setup is, is really interesting. As you can see, it's if you use BTRFS, I think that it uses all these sub volumes on any distribution anyways. OpenSUSE is just very explicit about what it's doing. So I think that the home directory is, or excuse me, the home partition is XFS, which is a, another type of file system like XF or X, EXT4, I think is the really common standard that Ubuntu uses. Uh, OpenSUSE uses XFS. And for the root partition, OpenSUSE uses BTRFS and you can use Snapper to make snapshots of your root file system and stuff. This is all advanced sort of stuff. Desktop users probably won't have a whole lot of use for it, um, but it's very interesting and very useful nonetheless. So we will go ahead and accept this and move on. So we'll choose our time zone, move past this. Whoops, wow, I clicked, uh, I clicked next twice. So the, the ISO is freaking massive. It's like 4.5 gigs, four and a half gigabytes of install media. And uh, you know, that's good and bad. Obviously it's bad because it's huge. And if you don't have a fast internet connection, it's going to take a while to download. Uh, it's good in that you don't have to be on connected to the internet to get any of these. You've got KDE plasma, GNOME desktop. You can use a server text mode, which is kind of a nice touch. And then you've also got XFC and a minimal X window. I'm not really sure what that is. That might be like ice WM or something. I know that Razer QT comes as part of leap 42.2. If I read the release notes, right? I'm not sure why it's not listed here, but I know that it's going to be in the repositories. We're just going to use KDE plasma. Cause that's kind of like the default. I don't think that they would say that's the default, but I think everybody considers KDE the default desktop for OpenSUSE. So we'll create our user and set our password and I'm going to set it to something lame. 
because uh, this is not going to be a persistent system. And at the very end, you get this really, really nice summary so that there's kind of this point of no return uh, on a lot of systems. Once you get to the point where you create your user, you hit next and like, it's good. It's, it's off and running. OpenSUSE gives you a chance to kind of look at things and change things. You can change your boot setup and you, I think that you can actually install some extra software, which is really, really nice. It's like, well, I'm gonna do some Ruby development. So I'm gonna install, you know, the Ruby group or whatever the hell this is called. You, it installs some proprietary software by default. Um, it doesn't list what those proprietary packages are, but it looks like they're being installed either way. I'm not really sure. So this is a really, really sweet touch. And you can do some stuff with your firewall. You can disable it. You can open your SSH port. And um, I don't know what this does. System and hardware detection. Anyways, let's just go ahead and install the system. If it finishes up, I'll go back. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go back to the installer. Wow, this is a lot of information, holy crap. So let's go, uh, let's go back. There we go. I'll be back in a couple minutes. So that was, without any question, the longest install, Linux distribution install, that I have ever experienced. Now granted, I think a large part of that is probably due to the fact that I'm installing to a really slow hard drive, but it is a, a painfully, painfully long install. So, OpenSUSE 42.2 uses Linux kernel 4.4, and you can see that it was talking about firmware bug AMD VI. Unfortunately, AMD VI seems to be broken on a lot of motherboards. This is a gigabyte motherboard. My MSI motherboard has the same damn issue. So that's unfortunate. That doesn't have anything to do with the uh, Linux dis distribution though. That's not OpenSUSE's fault. So right out of the gate, we have 20 software updates available, which is a little odd because that install took so long. I feel like it probably should have updated while we were installing, but okay. So here we are. This is KDE. I think that it is KDE 5.8. Let's find out. And it is, in fact, KDE Plasma version 5.8.2 with KDE Framework version 5.8. 26. I have no idea what the framework version means, but I'm sure that it's important. So graphical information. Um, I don't know if it's using Wayland. You know what? I didn't see a login screen. We bypass a login screen. That's odd. Auto login is enabled by default. Really? That's unusual. Um, at any rate, uh, Wayland is an entry here, though it doesn't have an icon. I don't know what that means. There's no information about it, so I don't know about Wayland. We have Xorg, of course, Gallium 0.4 and AMD Aruba. That is Mesa 11.2.2, not 12 and not 13, which is uh, kind of odd. I think 12 has been stable for a while, hasn't it? At least for, was it stable this year? I can't remember. 11.2.2 is just fine though. I mean, you can play games or do whatever you wanna do on it so everything seems to be working fine I mean you've got the transparent windows and all sorts of effects and I don't see any lag or or tearing or anything on my end I don't know maybe the recording will show some artifacts or what have you but I mean it looks fine right so let's go ahead and do this update um, you know what let's actually do the update from the command line just because so there's Yast updates even, interesting. I don't, I don't really know why this wasn't performed during the install, but whatever. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And let's do, wow, that took a weird amount of time to load. Why is it only covering the top half of this? Look at that, that's odd. Why is it doing that? Is it because it's on the top? Is it because it's like on the the thing on, I don't know, is that like a bug? Does it do it with this one too? It does. Okay. That's a feature, that's like a, that's a weird one. So let's do that. And yeah, okay. So that's all working good. 
We've got Dolphin. What version of Dolphin is this? Not about KDE, about Dolphin. And it is Dolphin version 16.02. Probably just comes with the version of KDE Plasma that we have, which is cool. So let's take a peek at Yast. Again, I'm not gonna dive into Yast. Yast, I could make a video about Yast by itself. It's such a monstrous tool. But this is what we've got. Now, one weird thing about OpenSUSE that I wasn't able to really talk about because for some reason we didn't see the network section in the installer. Maybe they did away with it, I don't know. But it was somewhat misleading because there's, there's a section in the installer that I remember around networking and you actually have to set up and configure your network devices, otherwise you'll log in and you won't have networking. But if they solved that problem, that would be super. I'd, I have Wi-Fi on this, so you notice how it's not configured. We have to configure it by hand, and uh, let's go ahead and do that. So notice how it automatically sets it up as static, statically assigned IP address. Um, if you're just like a home desktop user, there's a it's really, really unlikely that you're gonna have a statically assigned IP address. I mean, you might, but for the most part, if you've got like a router, it's probably going to be using DHCP. So I don't, I don't really know why statically assigned IP address is the default, but we'll go ahead and go next. And um, I'm not gonna set anything up here. I just wanna like enable the device. Uh, sure, so there we go. It's not doing anything because I didn't actually like sign it in or connect it to anything, but at least the device is configured. You can go to global op options and change it from Wicked to Network Manager, in which case you can let the KDE Network Manager applet, which isn't even running, handle networking. But Yast or Yast or OpenSUSE or whatever is going on uses Wicked, and Wicked works fine, so I'll just leave it there. You can change your host name here, which is kind of cool, and do some routing stuff. It's a really powerful tool. You can do all sorts of stuff. So in order to set up the Wi-Fi, I guess it has to install IW. But if we're still installing here, okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah, go ahead and install it. So Yast automates that, and that's really cool. So now that we're done with that, let's dig into the software management. This is a really, really awesome tool. It blows tools like Apper or Synaptic out of the water. Look up something like Chrome. Chrome driver, web driver? Uh, how about Chromium? So here's Chromium. Ah, uh, okay. And let's do something like Neverball. Just something that, that uses 3D so we can kind of see what the driver looks like. I'm gonna pull down some Java stuff, which is kind of weird, but whatever. So that's installing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the applications. Notice how it's actually not using Launchy or Launchpad or what the hell is it called? Um, application launcher, I thought it had, or kickstart. Was that what it was called? I thought it had a name. I guess they just changed it to application menu and application launcher. This is what I remember with KDE back when I used it. There we go. Yeah, this is what I'm familiar with. So we've got games. Um, wow, that's nested pretty deep. I figured that it would just be all the games here, but I guess not. We've got a couple games. Uh, we've got graphics comes with GIMP, which is nice. GIMP is like a must-have. Oops. Uh, it comes with Firefox, and I just installed Chrome. It comes with Conqueror. I thought that it came with Conky, but I guess not. Or er, Conky? Is that the name of it? It's the KDE browser. I can't remember what it's called. Got Kmail and all the other KDE sort of stuff. Got Mrock, D uh, Dragon, K3B, of course. I don't know who uses that. What the hell is AMZ Downloader? Never even heard of that. Uh, music? Huh. I don't know what that is. But it comes with it, so there is that. Office. It's going to come with LibreOffice, I bet. Yep. It comes with LibreOffice and some other stuff. Document Viewer, which is cool. And as far as utilities go... Uh, nothing? Okay, that was weird. There's just nothing here. It comes with Kate, or no, not Kate, k Wright. What happened to Kate? Is Kate not a thing anymore? Wow, it hasn't been that long since I've used KDE, geez. 
I don't know. It, I don't know if it's me, but it seems like it's running really, really slow. Like it takes forever for applications to launch, and I don't really know what the hell's going on. Seems really odd. So one thing that I remember about KDE, specifically OpenSUSE KDE, is that there's a lot of themes that you can use. Let's blow this up. And OpenSUSE has its own theme. Yeah, right here, how about that? But I thought that they had a dark theme. Yeah, OpenSUSE dark, how about that? So let's go ahead and apply that, see how that looks. Uh, I was expecting something a little more darker than this, but okay, I guess that works. Now here's the compositor. The compositor is using OpenGL right out of the box, which is cool. I mean, everything seems to be really super smooth, which is nice. It's just that application startup is really slow for some reason. Where's backgrounds? De is it desktop behavior, really? Uh, backgrounds? Really? Is it not in here anymore? Display and monitor? No, I was just here. How the hell do you change the background? Okay, that works. Hmm. That's odd. Notice how this... <laughs> I remember this, uh, this uh, background image. I've seen that before, but for some reason it's not available. I can just use the Breeze one or the um, regular OpenSUSE one. At any rate, our downloads are done, so let's go ahead and give Neverball a try. This actually looks really, really good. Oh, we still have a white dolphin, though. Like, everything else is this kind of nice charcoal. Not quite black, but it's charcoal with green accents. And then you open up dolphin, and it's just like this white just smacks you in the face. I don't really like that. But that's not an OpenSUSE thing. That's a, a uh, KDE thing. So here we have Neverball. So, um, where's my sound? Do we not get sound? Oh, the sound is, I think the sound is being piped into the capture card, so I, I don't hear it, but it should, it should come through in the video or not. I don't know where the sound is, but it's probably just a artifact of the way I'm recording. So I'm not very good at this game, but I think that this is like a hugely underrated game and it's really, really fun. Actually it runs really, really well. Let's blow it up. Uh, what the hell? Do I, is it one of those games where you have to actually tell the resolution to scale? <laughs> There's the capture card. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. Now let's see how it runs. Wait, is the graphic, are the graphics on full blast? Anti-aliasing, yeah. All right, now let's see how it runs. Sure. There we go. Yeah, all right. Yeah, this runs good. No complaints here. Wow, I suck at this game. Uh, what we didn't do, actually we kind of did. We talked about the kernel, didn't we? Man, it takes forever to launch stuff. The kernel is 4.4 default. It's definitely not the latest. The latest kernel as of this video is 4. Point... Oh boy, you guys are gonna correct me. I think that it's 4.8. I think that 4.9 might be an RC, but the latest stable is 4.8. So 4.4 seems a little old, but it also might be a LTS or just like a really stable kernel. That's probably why they chose it. But one thing that I will say is uh, there are a couple performance issues. Like when, let's go ahead and launch something like GIMP. So go ahead and let's count this, okay? How long is this going to take? That wasn't too bad. It's loading like normal. I mean, it's got to load all the extensions and stuff. That wasn't too bad. But why are the KDE programs taking so long? Like, let's open a console. That wasn't too bad. Hmm. 
Oh, well. At any rate, yep, this is uh, OpenSUSE 42.2 Leap. Uh, great distribution. It was, I think it was probably my first distribution I ever used. Uh, very fond memories of it. Really, really great choice. It's super solid. It would make a really good server OS. Uh, there's also OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which warrants a video all by itself. Uh, but yeah, this is a this is a pretty exciting distribution. I'm looking forward to it. So there you go.